where do we stand now in terms of this kind of issue within Turkey? Because uh, we'll turn uh, later in the conversation to the idea of this conflict within Turkey moving into Europe as Turkey becomes uh, a candidate member, if it does, for the European Union. So where yeah. is the situation in Turkey now in light of these kinds <laughs> of tensions and conflicts? You're right to bring me more to political issues, but I was going more into these uh, uh, under, how can I say, unconscious dimensions of the conflict between secular and religious women. But uh, you're right because the, the um, picture I was giving is an optimistic one in the sense that I was uh, suggesting the participation of these new social groups into uh, spheres of life like politics, market and the university. But the whole picture is not like this because the secularist public opinion elites including the military and the judicial power also had a lot of anxiety and they create obstacles for this participation. So this is the whole issue. What I mean by that, uh, there is very recently what we call a judicial coup a kind of legislation uh, which uh, might ban the political party which uh, had the majority vote in the last general elections and who tried to lif lift the ban of the headscarf in the universities. So that's why I was trying to elaborate on the anxieties created especially around the veiling issue because that was really, that is some kind of a nerve, a kind of um, a flashpoint, we a might flash call it, point, between exactly. the secular and the... It crystallizes many levels of conflict. And uh, so therefore, the, this move of the political party, which was not a religious move, because the argument was the equal access to high education. So it's important, the arguments. But this move, this project of law to lift the ban, let's say, from the universities, created a lot of anxiety. And uh, therefore, now they are trying to ban the political party. And therefore, it's a kind of military coup, but it's not a military coup. So the coups are changing their dimension. Before, it was military coup, with the arm, army itself invading the streets and the radio stations and so on. In time, that was 1960 and then 1970 and then 1980. And now we speak of coups are changing their nature. We spoke about a postmodern coup. We spoke about a e-coup, e that it was electronic coup, because the military has um, um, well, they released a statement. They uh, released on a the statement on, the, on their web page, yeah. and uh, at midnight, saying that security, secularism was in danger, and therefore it was a kind of uh, coup, but we called it e coup. And now we sp speak about slow judiciary coup. That means that it's not only military. That's what I'm coming back at. It's not only an issue of military power. On the other hand, on the contrary, maybe military knows that they cannot manage the whole country through a coup anymore. Society became too complex for that. But now we have to go back to this first idea that there are secularist middle classes as well and elites who calls for military mm -hmm. easily. That is the question. They do not see any problem when they feel threatened that secularism should be more important than democracy. So that is the tension. That is the tension between is secularism is seen as a precondition for democracy and can be a hindrance for democracy, for democratic participation. That's where Turkey is now. So this vicious circle between secularism and democracy, which shouldn't be a vicious circle. As you said at the beginning, it's an inbred tension from the beginning because it is related with modern and traditional Turkey.